The Old Castle, Vecchio Castel. There is this social trend that haunts classical music, especially over the last hundred years. This has caused classical music to become a sort of isolated art meant for a particular audience. Many people east you the music, they feel it's without life and uh, seemingly removed from their everyday experience and understanding. Thus, they find it boring. In fact, by its nature, it is impossible for classical music to be boring. This is because, like any music, uh, classical music emanates from the soul of the composer who wrote it. Secondly, we consider classical music to be the best and most valuable, the essence of what is beautiful. Specifically, it represents the essence of beauty in mankind's soul and also within his art. So, we can perhaps account for why classical music is sometimes, uh, or more accurately stated, or why for many years now classical music has become largely disconnected from the culture of the music-loving masses. But this explanation does not suffice. Perhaps uh, it is our fault as musicians who inartfully fail to communicate the soul of the composer, who do not fully comprehend the content and who do not properly interpret or the psychological context of the music. We are not well versed in making more approachable with the very complex nature of if you will, the sounds of mankind's inner self. The work we examine today is often the victim of just an improper reading. Recall that in previous two episodes of Picture Series, we discussed the difficulty of portraying walking in the sense of being part of man's self-portrait, of its uh, revealing the hidden psychological details within. But at least uh, there were no structural problems in the first piece, which uh, represented the venue for the exhibition where the pictures hung, which also inspired Moses' creative work, the Gnome. Uh, this work was too complicated to give the simple explanation of its content as it spoke of the subconscious and various sorts of hidden psychological spaces within the human psyche. Therefore, of course, it was also very difficult to reveal and convey the understanding of that revelation to listening audience. But, once again, at least the structure of the form in both the first and second cases were not uh, severely tested. Within the castle, which we will now consider together as an object of our study, there is a strange twist to the story. Since the picture is called Il Vecchio Castello, or the old castle by Hartmann, Marius Petrovich uh, burst completely in novel connection or in his mind and, uh, and soul. There were no directly derivative of the picture's title. The name is misleading when attempting to use it as a direct instruction for playing the piece. We, the performers, must attack it head first. This approach will primarily provide a two-dimensional understanding of the musical intentions of the composer using only biographical details and the title itself to provide this starting point for our analysis. This gives us our first glimpse of music's basics, inspiration and impulse without necessarily delving into the hidden roots of its context. And this provides us a perfect opportunity to depart from the idea of pure composition. Beginning with, um, with the beginning with the notion uh, that many of even most large serious music will have over the centuries has uh, been completely misinterpreted, and people who know only notes and motifs have an incomplete understanding you know, of what the music is about and how to bring its true meaning to the audience. So, what did Mussorgsky see in this picture? A wonderful sketch of an ancient Italian castle. Thus, he literally named the musical picture Old Castle without any change to the original title of the pictures. This was the same in every case for all the pictures, but unfortunately, the name does not tell us anything. You cannot play stone 
The old castle did not natively inspire anything in the soul of the performers except they introduced the image of an old worn-out stone. I understand how the castle's physical geometry has provided the whole world's interpretation with a false narrative. But to be clear, this mistake is inexcusable, and making it speaks to the unprofessional superficiality of those choosing that narrative. Unfortunately, this includes practitioners of my own profession, much to my shame. And no one bothered to think about what of the why. Why is there such a strong expressiveness, sadness? And what is built up into this music? And what gave birth to the image of the neglected old stone and Mussorgsky heart? In principle, it's not hard to guess that if a person thinks about the past, he thinks about life too. About life in this castle, that about the time which was, about the country from which the thought of this work was inspired. It means that this is in Italy. It means that there is a life within it. It means that we must imagine what was in this castle and not play only about the stone. In this castle, there was a beautiful life that Modest Petrovich presented, and in which he described and in which he lamented. His visit to Hartsman's exhibition was associated with the very tragic circumstances. His friend died unexpectedly, a young, handsome man. In the prime of his life, Mussorgsky is shocked. Mussorgsky himself is quite sensitive to the notion of death and the mortality of men. He is hugely shocked and shaking. Naturally, every thought is... In every picture, a sense of love and death. And uh, how we could miss this for a hundred or forty years just does not enter to my brain, does not enter into my mind. This speaks of a total mental and psychological retardation of the whole musician's workshop, to which I belong also. I emphasize this. I do not distance myself from this. All these mistakes were made by the members of our profession during 150 years of active concertizing. And I have also made such mistakes. So let's analyze what happened, why it happened, what is happening in the music, and what was Mades Petrovich thinking of. We have to remember that it is all so tragic. And it is all so private. <clears throat> and it, it has not again and again, I want to stress your attention, that this has nothing to do with pictures. There is no connection except triggering all his mind and soul to focus on his inner consciousness and inner communication with the world, with the space of the life. So let's go and have a closer look. What is Modest Petrovich thinking in this work? Vecchio Castello. A strange florid melody, isn't it? There's something Moorish, southern. It curls like a snake. There is an Arab, Greek, South Italian influences. This appears only in the low voices. Let's move on to the upper voice and see what's going on there.
It seems that there are links in one chain, and there are the links of one chain. Only this chain, which took root from the seed that fell into the soul of Madas Petrovic, is singly voiced. Madas Petrovic transforms into a polyphonic one, and these links are synchronized, sounding together. So what is it that the composer asks of us, uh, as always in Italian? Andantino molto cantabile e con dolore. Hence, unhurriedly, and andantino is a little faster than andante, so faster than regular walking speed, very lyrical, and with pain, with pain. So something very aching about what was lost, about that which was once alive. We could this warm southern chain, where it comes from? So where could it be from? Let's have a look. with a clearly dancing rhythm that's emphasized by the appearing in the basses. So we hear the tambourine. We are closer. And what's his my upper voice? Italian castle. Madres Petrovic thinks about Italy, and naturally, in his mind, he immediately begins playing Italian music. Madres Petrovic was a nationalistic artist who appreciated native-born music. As I always emphasize, he felt in his soul a connection to the folk music of the people as played in Italy. And he closed here to use one of the most popular themes, which is Tarantella. Let's remember how it sounds. The ornate part continues next. And then the variation. This is the kind of music played in this castle when it was alive, when there was life, when they danced there, when they lived there, when there were ladies and gentlemen, where there were signores and signores, the beautiful, beautiful people around. This is of course seen by Modest Petrovic with his remarkable sadness and Russian nostalgia reflected by the lens of the circumstances he lived through. The southern Mediterranean music, which of course was influenced by uh, and bears flavors of Greek, Moorish, African cultures in Naples, it won't reach such a geographic extent. The music was created and burst from the soul of Matthias Petrovich, but Matthias Petrovich, of course, did not translate the notes literally. However, Matthias Petrovich never forgot the people and their music. Where was he able to hear this music? Well, of course, there was some music remembered and shared by wandering musicians who hear this music in their everyday experiences. And where could the musicians be found? In the restaurant, of course, where he spent most of his time. Okay, let's say most of his free time. There was just such a restaurant as this, called Malo Yaroslavets, in which Modest Petrovich frequented. The restaurant opened in St. Petersburg in 1870. This coincided with the time that Moski matured as a creative artist. And this Petersburg restaurant, people were steeped as nationalism. I must explain that in St. Petersburg at that time, a restaurant with Russian cuisine was a rarity. And uh, the restaurants were French, German, whatever, Swiss, but the restaurants served Russian cuisine, and it was a place where you could experience feeling like a Russian and share in its taste side of a mutton with a buckwheat or porridge. This 
piece coincided with the period around 1870. There were such restaurants. Very famous restaurant, Mali Yaroslavets. Many contemporaries of Musaska recall that, of course, he unfortunately spent too much time there. And, and the Times St. Petersburg novelist ironically calls such a drinking behavior as a past him and intelligence, according to verb. Uh, for such times, literally, it means to be konyaching. The um, partaking is sweeter. Yeah, uh, libation <laughs> regularity. It's quite obvious that in such a place there were very many, well, a lot of stray musicians. There were good orchestras. We will later touch upon the detail. Why we're speaking of this in such in detail? Such a subsequent piece, uh, we will trace the connection with music that could contain harmonic combination with a person could hear only in a such place. Only could infer this source of harmonic structure by the combination of harmonies and by what kind of people played that kind of music. Gypsy orchestras, so roots of this music can be easily traced. That's interesting, surely. There were some visiting artists, probably some Italian troupe, traveling musicians who played there. I'm absolutely sure that this was live music touching the solo music. It was not based in musical literature which he could examine in local archives. Or, or hear them as part of an, an opera. No, this music is most like from the streets, since the music is very simple. And it is clear how it's transformed in the solo music. The Mediterranean sun of Africa uh, radiates into St. Petersburg, in the cold St. Petersburg, snowy St. Petersburg, cools, passes through the consciousness of this remarkable Russian man. Is uh, refracted and uh, becomes a nostalgic romance with almost a gypsy style. Such a fantastic metamorphosis. We are definitely not playing an old stone. And now we understand what pace or tempo we must choose and why we are choosing it to avoid making the mistakes we made at the beginnings. All probably were confused by the choice of Andantina, yes. And the musicians probably said the metronome on Andante and got the incurrent pacing. Now, from this point, we should not proceed from six eights, on which the instruction of Moschi is based, but instead use a bipartite rhythm, just as a Neapolitan danced when they jumped with such music. Two quivers. Naturally, this music was filtered through sad circumstances and it depressed so we should consider this and take it to our consideration. Of course, Mosesky brilliantly makes new memories, but through personal grief and thoughts of death, memento mori. The music now conveys, but a shadow of St. Petersburg Tarantella. Mosesky often cites Faust, which he hated, but uh, quotes very often and agrees with a uh, thought, use your life to live or sleep peacefully in a coffin. In the Russian translation, this is Maxim of Goethe, Mosesky hated it, but agreed. He said it said very badly, very vulgar, but it's true. Of course, he thinks about it, and ponders it, a great ideal. There is such a strong wave of sadness. Hartman died, but Despetrovich found himself unhappy with his cramped circumstances of life. He himself is shocked, because the once life filled old castle has been portrayed in the picture as a mermosy stone. You can imagine how much all of this inspired melancholic thoughts. Therefore, after passing through the dense layer of consciousness, music becomes very clarified and uh, easy to understand. 
And we are no longer mistaken in anything, neither in pace, nor in content, nor in intonations. Do not be embarrassed by the fact that the greater composer raised music directly from the street. Okay, he elevated flowers and drew beauty straight from the mud. But in fact, there is no dirt. Remember, Toulouse-Lautrec, for example. Remember all the other on martyr artists and all the wonderful arts in general. That's fine beauty and the gold instincts. You know, beauty everywhere. Because it's in his soul, regardless of where he is located. Therefore, whether it's in restaurant or a brothel, whatever, it is a real pure artist with a pure soul, a pure warm heart, will always find a spark of eternal beauty everywhere. Therefore, through the St. Petersburg restaurant, through the lonely nights, one-to-one with a bottle of cognac, and his restaurant music, through a great soul and great heart, we get wonderful music. I would also like to say that, of course, this approach very strongly divides creative people into two opposite, two opposing, possibly irreconcilable camps. That is a quite clear why Tchaikovsky or Rachmaninoff hated Mozovsky. They just didn't accept him. For them it was vulgar. Every other letter when Tchaikovsky refers to Mozovsky, he describes him as a vulgar, disgusting, muck vulgarity. Well, yes, they were members of the high society. They were the parlor singers of the grand living rooms, and Mozovsky was a tavern singer of the street. The rock guy of the late 20th century. And I understand very well why Shostakovich so fell in love with Mozovsky, because it was very close to his soul, too. I must say you know, that speaking for myself about my own experience, uh, then for the greater part of my life, I spent time with guests of high society in their living rooms. And <clears throat> it was very close to me, much closer. But I found that with age, I became less tolerant of that life. I tolerated it, but now I see things from a broader perspective. And I must say, that it is now those artists who come from the people, they are closer and more precious to me. And their view is deeper, more comprehensive, and connects with the roots of humanity. It's birth and death rather than the refined status of some people. Okay, let's go through the text, as we usually do, in order to see together how the music of the Tarantella is ingeniously transformed in the cruel romance of Modest Petrovich, or, as we call it today in the modern world, a ballad. A very, very familiar modern ballad, which we all used to since the second half of the 20th century, which is the most precious for our hearts and our sense of poetry. Now we see here the second part of Tarantella, and the first part he just inverts it and turns into a beautiful melody. Great. Just great. The tambourine does not turn into a mere act of jumping. Dancing happy drunkards, not even necessary drunkards, but instead it can be from an Italian wedding or from anything you like. So where does the term tell come from? Because at many, you know, f- at many, at many functions, the term tell is danced, and the term tell always appears in the form of limericks. One verse, then a second verse, then a third verse, and the fourth verse. The longer the song created, the greater the number of verses in the song. Uh, there will also be more 
There will be more rhythms, as in Russian they say, musical cycles. They change from a minor uh, to a major, and sometimes living chords, which we'll, have, oh, we'll see throughout the text. We'll see this throughout the text. So that's Mades Petrovich utilized the couplet form. Therefore, I mentioned the word ballad is a story, his story. So the tambourine turns into a pulsation of time. The memento mori reminds us of the transience of life. On the one hand, on the other hand, it sounds like a disturbing alarm, like a pulse of the heart, which can break in any second, make it so stressful. It stresses us. It stresses really. It stresses us as a subconscious level, on, on a subconscious level, like a real life. An empty fifth interval is added. The middle voice is always a fifth represent a fear of emptiness. A clean, empty interval with a groan. Just fear of death. You hear the groan. Already there are two voices we hear in the whole pulse. Of, we, we hear the entire pulse of life, the entire pulsation of our presence in the planet. And the middle voice is cries and groans and looking to the castle speaks and the moans of ghosts that might also be there. That's how his genius deals with the two sounds. These two sounds will have the entire picture of transcendental universe, of our being. Mades Petrovich played this melody a bit later in the upper voice because his circle of friends worried that uh, that was being a bit boring and monotonous. Apparently, too, they did not understand what it was all about. It isn't, of course, at all monotonous or boring. It is possible the music can still have the access of ornamentation removed. Still will be wonderful in case somebody finds it superficial. And yet Mades Petrovich, through his intuition and his genius, instantly created such emotion and such tension that it will never become boring. Well, I hope that here, with these two notes added in a figure, a troubadour who could be there somewhere, uh, his spirit is hooing. Mades Petrovich is a talkative man, utilizing such a simple material added to the troubadour. So the second verse. Absolutely stunning harmonic moves. That touched the solo such a degree. Of course, he borrows it from the guitar. Here, our golden, wonderful Modest Petrovich gives a little glimpse of himself and, and flies geographically to Spain because those chords are typical for the Spanish guitar. And thus, where well, I wrote humorously about my work for my friends, that sometimes geographically through the enrichment of the music with a certain harmony, Mades Petrovich disappears from Italy and goes to Spain, and moving to Spain, or shifting to Spain, even to the south of Spain, to some Alhambra. Such material is so great for jazz, for modern pop music, ballads. Anyone may borrow it. It isn't copyrighted, please. Feel free. So the next verse. What Mades Petro is doing in this section? Beginning with complete emptiness, corpses, stone, graves. He gradually adds more life to each verse, more and more with each verse. Now let's see what was happening there. What was, what was operation? He imagined the dance rhythm would not disappear as long as he asking for those little slurs. 
It's amazing how the musician of Clue is about the danceable nature of this music. That is, it should jump, bounce, that it should be danceable, it should jump. However, that was largely unnoticed by everyone. That is, he, we noticed dance elements, and after the first two verses, in which he just cried, illustrated for us live in Old Castle 500 years ago. And each time, every phrase, each was a groan. So every verse, every phrase, the groan and cried, because everything is gone, everything is gone, everything is gone. All the time he's sensitively talking about this, all gone. He was very sensitive to this topic. In other words, what happened with Hartmann um, at this exhibition deeply affected him. We know this because he, if he follows this, this biographical, biographical information, this Petrovich was incredibly bitter about life and death afterwards. In particular, he absolutely did not recognize the humanistic idea of Tolstoy, which I, by the way, often believe, as many others do, that a person does not die but remains alive with us through our consciousness. He rejected all this. He rejected it. And even his direct quotes were preserved. He said, uh, don't console me. This is not reality. It's just a cool, cool, said Moses, because he who dies never returns. He's a polyphonist. Now we see the polyphony. There is a polyphonic work in the first verse. Not only did he show that there was dancing there. So there was the seniors and senioritas were rejoicing there. There were fans, there were courtship. And now he just goes on to Romans, to the story of love, which we can see here. This chain of chords he borrows from the major part of the tarantella. If you forget it, I remind you how it sounds. When the dust becomes dance becoming really hot. And when the chords hang before the partners come together, here is. That's how it transformed everything. The soul of Modest Petrovich transformed this. Ah! Suspended in the air. So what's next? And further musician interprets. Such chromatisms unambiguously. You just have to know this. When we hear such a chromatic movement, within a certain harmonic treatment, it's always a signal of sensuality. That is, it's already open sexuality, sensation. With the song, everything has passed away, and it's passed away, everything is passed away. People with all their ten senses, with all their beauty and sensuality and sexuality, all passed away. And we go forward with the pulse of the time. So sound of trumpet, Modest Petrovich, as life. Modest Petrovich prepares life. And passion. He already sees life. That was here one day. Everything has already almost become reborn. And all of a sudden, breaks off abruptly. This idea of left unfinished is all over. The dance is falling apart. That's what we have left to people. Some bones and their graves. The last verse. So what does it mean in the language of Mussorgsky? 
Not only it is the language of Mozart, it is the language of Liszt, the language of Shostakovich, the language of all clever composers. What we hear in the middle voice is the chimera of death. Listen carefully. Usually the theme is given to a bassoon. The bassoon often plays as this, or some kind of combination of wind instrument that mimic this very well. The des, devilish, deadly signs. And Madras Petrov specifically asked the last verse to make again super expressive. Expressively, he put expressive just above. It's a chimera of death, so she is the last day. He is emphasizing it. So that it's. Dead. The last breath. It's like an epitaph in the language of Wolosowski. And the last cry? Farewell! Farewell, forgive, gone, everything will pass. Life has passed, life has passed, everything passed, we're all dead. There are only bones and decay. They're the whole of what's content. Many thanks, ladies and gentlemen.